In today's 10 Talk, what I want to discuss with you is um, the issue of uh, suspended algae. Um, algae within uh, ponds can become a real, real serious issue. And in this particular case, this is a wedding venue. And this wedding venue is one of the most pristine locations in all of the Temecula wine country. And they have had a problem with a lake management on their lake for quite some time. And we've come along here to solve their problem. We've installed one of two intake bays. The second one is almost completed. And I want you to see what happens. Here, look at this. You see this current of algae that's flowing in right now? You see this? What's happening is, is that you've got 7,500 gallons an hour worth of flow coming around that rock and collecting in this bay area right over here. Look at how much is collected in just a matter of a few hours. Look at this. Now, this area here, as we get closer to where the vault is, and this will be hidden by the time we're done, but as we get closer to where the vault is, it is super, super dense. And as you can see, there is just a really nice flow coming in and working its way over. And the idea behind that is, is that eventually what will happen is, is that all this surface tension, all this algae, aided by jets that we've ran all alongside the current of this lake, the side of this lake here, all the way over here. Those jets are blowing a little microcurrent underneath the water and it's helping the wind as the wind also blows in an easterly direction towards this intake bay. And as you can see, it's pulled in leaves, it's pulled in cattail. It's just really drawing and it's doing a great job. And to kind of camouflage it, we put some logs around it and some um, uh, logs. We got logs, we got, uh, what do they call those things? Tree roots and all sorts of stuff, tree stumps. So you can see this current is just flowing right along. Intake bay number two is happening on the other side of these reeds where you see my cat. And basically what we've done is, is we've created a false shelf over here. We've got our aqua blocks going in right now and we're almost to the point to where we're gonna be setting some large stones over here to match up with these guys here and uh, some logs and all that to naturalize that bay as well. And as the wind blows the algae in this direction, as the jets blow the water in this direction, it really just sets up a great current. Look at this mess. But it's getting clean. So I love intake bays. Intake bays are a real natural way to uh, filter large bodies of water as well as small bodies of water. And in a lot of the ponds that we install, we install ponds with intake bays. Why is that? Because they're super low maintenance and they just do a great job. They're also very natural. They blend in with the landscape so you don't have like a skimmer lid. You don't have a lot of plastic parts that you end up showing. And you just basically set it and forget it and let it do its thing, let it do its job. And then periodically you'll come along and clean the scum off the surface. What we've done is, is we've got this, the, the pond level here, just barely, just barely above where the rocks are. So what can happen is, is that as the algae begins to collect, all we have to do is just come along and just scoop the stuff off the top and it just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. The next step with this lake is to prescribe a proper method of water treatment. Now, if you've seen a lot of my videos, one of my favorite videos, I'm gonna mention her by name, Lola's Pond. Uh, she's the one that went pea soup in um, Easter of last year. And within, I think it was about two weeks, Lola's pond was crystal clear and I came back and shot another video. Um, as it sits right now, I think we got about 17,000 views on that one video um, on the, on the follow-up. Maybe, I don't know, it's the original video. Now that's around 25,000 views, I don't know. But the good news is we're getting the word out and we're teaching people that you can enjoy the pond life, you can have the, the, the pond lifestyle, the aquascape lifestyle, and you don't have to live with a big mess on your hands. Whether you're a big winery like this one, or a small backyard pond. So I'm gonna take you over here, let you take a quick look and see the inner workings before we uh, start graveling this thing up. To give you an idea how big some of these rocks are, I'm just gonna go ahead and set a Home Depot bucket next to these boulders. 
So they're pretty sizable. Like this one over here is maybe about 600 pounds or so. This one here is probably about another six, 700 pounds. It's not too big. This log here is about six and a half feet, seven feet long. We're gonna use that to create a nice edge along the side. And this little guy over here, he's kind of cool too. And I've got a few more pieces laying around. I think they're in my utility trailer on the other side of this over here. It's, um, it's a complex installation if you don't know what you're doing. Right now I'm gonna take you over here and let you see what Ryan is doing. I'm just gonna let you watch him. And I'm gonna kind of describe what Ryan's up to. We've already installed our vault and we have aqua blocks running in this line over here. Now, the tricky thing is, is installing this in an, ex in an existing body of water was, was to be able to create a shelf. So what I did is, is I took a three foot corrugated tube, you know, and I cut it in half and filled the bottom part of that tube with gravel. And by filling the bottom part of that tube with gravel, it allows us to create a negative, to create a shelf inside the pond on the far side of where that tube is, which is just on the other side of Ryan, there's boulders that are holding that tube in place. And then we came along with gravel and we smoothed ourselves out so that we can have a nice smooth surface to set our aqua blocks on. Then after we did that, then um, we used underlayment and pulled the underlayment tight against the blocks, took gravel and spread gravel on this side over here and took the aqua blocks and laid them up against the side of the tube. You can see where Ryan is standing. If, he wasn't, if that tube wasn't there, he'd be in about four foot deep of water right now. So he's, at this time, trimming back the extra underlayment so we can just get to that point to where we start taking large cobble and putting them on top of the aqua blocks and then backfilling so that when Aaron gets back from lunch, we can start setting our feature stones, lock in our vault, um, set our logs over here the way that we're gonna set our logs. Maybe we might do one over this way, not 100% sure, but this project will be complete in a matter of a couple of hours. And um, the amount of algae, the amount of algae coming off the surface of this pond is just amazing. So this is a fun project for us down in uh, Temecula Wine Country. The name of the winery that we're at is Vitaliano, Vitaliano Winery. It's on Glen Oaks Road in um, Temecula Wine Country. And like I said, their wedding venue is top notch. I performed a wedding over at Serendipity which is over in Oak Glen. Um, I want to say it was, when was it? It was back in uh, November. And um, the ponds over there, I'm almost certain a pond digger built those ponds. They're amazing, amazing construction. I absolutely love his work. He's just an incredible artist. And um, the ponds, there was a pond right by the altar where the ceremony was performed. There's another huge lake over there that has intake bays, that has wetland filters, and that water is crystal, crystal clear. Now, the next step over here at Vitaliano is going to be up top that hill. We're going to build a wetland filter up top of that. We're going to have waterfalls coming down over here, and they're going to come in on the opposite side of where those chairs are over here, where you see the sprinklers going off, and that'll be a beautiful waterfall on that side. I still think that this lake needs maybe two more, if not three more, intake bays just to be able to keep this thing clear. But again, like I say, with proper water management, I also think that we're gonna solve the problem with the surface tension on this pond with a lot of the algae that we have going on. He's been fighting this algae, he says, for the better part of, um, I think six months, but I'm gonna guess it's been a lot longer than that based on what I'm seeing right now. So there is your quick 10 talk on intake bays. And the cool thing that we did here is we installed it in an existing body of water. So let's say that you have a really big body of water and you want to skim that and you want to clean it up. Give me a call. I know how to do it. And those steps are steps that just are very, very simple to me, but to most people, they might be, wow, that's pretty clever how he's done that. Well, there it is. I'm Carl with Columbia Water Gardens, and I'm here to remind you that two things. One, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please give a subscribe. If you have questions about this video, please put those comments down below. I respond to every single one of the comments. And, um, and if you um, just like this video, then go ahead and share it through social media, share it through some of your pond, um, uh, through some of your pond pages that you're a member of. But most important, I'm here to remind you that intake bays really, really matter. Happy ponding.